This is my Socket 7 machine. It's running a Pentium MMX200 with 32 megabytes of RAM and an S3 Trio Verge video card. Today I'll walk you through my Socket 7 machine and give you some tips and pointers on to building your own. Firstly, let's talk about the CPU. Socket 7 accepts a wide variety of CPUs, from Pentium 100 to an AMD K62. There is a lot of choice. My recommendation would be to go with a Pentium MMX CPU. Anything above 166 MHz should be fast enough to do any task on a Socket 7 machine. You could go with something like a 450 MHz AMD K62, but if you're looking for something that fast, you're better off going with a Pentium 2. The fastest Socket 7 CPU is a Tillamook called Pentium MMX 350 MHz CPU. So if you're really all about pushing Socket 7 to the limit, seek a CPU of that spec. But overall, if you just want to play some games from the era, just a regular Pentium MMX CPU of 166 MHz or faster should be enough. Another important thing to consider when building a Socket 7 machine is the motherboard. With a Pentium MMX CPU, you can have literally any chipset on the motherboard and it will work fine, so don't worry about the chipset. Look for something that has a standard button cell battery mount on it. When a motherboard with a real-time clock chip or a Vitar battery fail, they are hard to replace and can sometimes stop your motherboard from working with battery acid corrosion. You can also get a Super Socket 7 motherboard, but that is a lot different to just a typical Socket 7 board, so I won't be covering that here as it deserves a video of its own. For the RAM, just get around 32 to 64 megabytes. That's plenty. You can also get L2 cache, which will make your machine even faster. I would recommend getting this. There are quite a few video card options for Socket 7, the all-time best being the T-Seng Labs ET6000 card. This card outperforms every other video card in most games, so it's a no-brainer to just get this one. Only problem is that it's quite expensive. The other alternative is an S3 Trio 64DX. This is the second best card and is a lot cheaper than a T-Seng card. You can also get a 3D accelerator like the 3DFX Voodoo. This is a good card to have, but again, it is very expensive. For the hard drive, just get an SD to IDE. They are really cheap and use an SD card as the hard drive, so it's easy to transfer games and software and other things to the hard drive easily through a modern computer. The great thing about Windows 95 and 8 is even in the current day, Windows have never changed the architecture of their file structure. So that means if you have a file on Windows 98, it reads on a modern computer running Windows 10. And if you have a file on Windows 10, it can read on Windows 98. It's very good. This is about all you need to know when building a Socket 7 machine. You will also need a case power supply and drives, but that is all self-explanatory. I hope this video helped you in picking out the right parts for your Socket 7 build.